So then uh, we will proceed to our next talk. Um, our next talk is uh, by Tobias Buchberger and Ines Kramer from FH Vienna. Um, they are both researchers for IT security at the um, FH campus Wien. And they um, have both been working there for uh, some time um, with a focus on security and IoT systems in particular. And they will present the CoMatrix project, um, which enables to use the Matrix protocol with uh, low end IoT devices. And they show how they implemented it using Riot on some constrained hardware. And they will share, hopefully, their experiences and, and pitfalls they encountered while implementing this. I hope this is correct. Um, we can see your whole screen, or both of your screens, actually. Yeah, hi, everybody. So, unfortunately, our um, this, uh, uh, Linux allows us only to share our full screen. I'm sorry for that. Um, maybe you can start our slides and we switch to our screen when we start the demo. Hello, can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you one second. I mean, do you have? Okay. It, uh, okay, you cannot um, show only one of your applications, right? So, one second. Um, did you upload the slides? We did upload the slides, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we can can switch to the application. We can yeah. try that. Yeah, I think if you go and share and then just select the application. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, credit is pre okay. No, it's just the rest of them. I'm sorry, we, we, can't, we cannot select just the okay, slides. What? I'm sorry. Second, I share the screen, don't worry. Okay, just a second. But I can share the screen from my, my laptop. One moment. Otherwise, we. Have you can also do it this way. Oh. Okay, it's yes, now we can see the screen. Okay. Oh, sorry, the wrong slide. So, okay. Um, maybe, you sorry can, that. maybe you can press Ctrl A, then you have a, a full screen um, for your PDF. Or uh, view left, uh, control L. Oh. Anzeige, it's about, it's under Anzeige. Yes, and then there's a whole build, exactly. Thank you. Okay. Sorry for the technical problems. So, hello everybody again. Uh, I'm Tobi. Um, this is my colleague Ines. And we will today present you our uh, Comatrix project. And I will first start with the background of our project before um, yeah, going into detail what our project is about. So the, the background is um, that um, messaging services have increasingly been centralized into the hands of a few companies. So you may already observe this yourself. Uh, one example for this is uh, Facebook and WhatsApp. And in, in, because of this um, development, um, there was a, a new communications protocol uh, developed, which is called Matrix, which is an open standard for interoperable decentralized real-time communication over IP. And this uh, protocol is used to synchronize decentralized conversation history, and it can also be used to bridge between different messaging systems, so we can talk via uh, other participants over uh, which are connected via email or, for example, via IRC, also with Matrix. And uh, behind Matrix, there is a foundation uh, which provides different things. For example, the specifications. Um, in our case, for our project, the client-server API is the important specification. And um, uh, since Matrix is decentralized, uh, there is the possibility to um, uh, yeah, that everyone can deploy his own home server. And there is a reference implementation which is called uh, Synapse. And also there are, since this uh, everything is uh, open source, 
um, there are also different clients and one example for such a matrix client is uh, element and we will now take a short look uh, behind the scenes of matrix so this uh, communication protocol is built on the common web standards uh, which means that all communication happens via HTTP calls to a RESTful API and uh, transport security is provided by TLS and the data payloads are exchanged in JSON format. And I have put here on this slide um, a short CURL comment where you can see that there is an uh, HTTP put, um, uh, which is for an HTTP put message. And then there is the payload, uh, which uh, where it defines that this is a message of uh, type M text. And um, then uh, there is a body also contained in the payload, uh, which specifies that the message is the actual, actual message is hello. And then there is the, uh, the API endpoint of a Synapse home server uh, uh, provided here. Uh, where you can see that there is a few dynamic information added to this API endpoint. For example, the room ID is dependent on the, the room that is, uh, the message is sent to. Then there needs to be added a, a transaction ID, which is a unique message identifier. And um, because sending of, of a message needs authentication, we also need to provide a uh, Synapse access token, which is the last part. And if this comment was successful, uh, an event ID will be returned. And um, as you can see, these are the common web standards. And uh, one of the proposed use cases for matrix is IoT. But may you wonder how with this web stack you should um, um, use it with the IoT. And this is where our project comes into place, uh, which is uh, CoMatrix, uh, which stands for Constraint Matrix where we try to combine the powerful semantics of the uh, matrix protocol with the restrictions of constraint environments. And we aim to enhance the matrix protocol by also making it accessible for constraint IoT devices. And on these slides, we have put the normal uh, matrix network stack we already talked about and our co-matrix net, uh, network stack in comparison. And as you can see, when I uh, will start with the physical layer, so in uh, normal matrix usage, we will be uh, connected via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. And in our constraint stack, we uh, have the communication based on IEEE 800-215.4. And uh, for the addressing, uh, we uh, use in our constraints uh, stack 6 low weapon instead of normal IP4 or IP4.6. And instead of using uh, TCP, we are using UDP. Um, we replace uh, HTTP by using co-op and uh, for the uh, payload encoding, we are using CBAR instead of JSON. And uh, DTLS here is in braces and my colleague Ines will uh, explain later why this is in braces here. So um, how did we, uh, also, how does this work? Um, for our project, we implemented a, a so-called Comatrix gateway and this gateway communicates with the constraint IoT devices on one side via co-op and CBAR. And uh, this gateway translates then to the matrix protocol on the other side, so where it uh, communicates with a matrix home server. And we also implemented a co-matrix client, which is an external RioDS module. And uh, we also uh, added two example applications using this uh, that show how to use this uh, RioDS module. And um, these uh, Comatrix clients interact with the matrix home servers via our gateway. Um, on this slide, I'll put an overview of how this uh, looks like. So on the right side, there is the Comatrix side of things. So we have our Comatrix clients, which are deployed on microcontrollers, which communicate with the Comatrix gateway via our uh, Comatrix network stack, uh, which is uh, based on 800.254. And on the left side, we have the uh, normal uh, matrix network stack. And these two sides are connected via the gateway, where the gateway is deployed on a Raspberry Pi 3B plus, uh, which is extended with an uh, 800.254 module from OpenLabs to be able to communicate with the microcontrollers. And uh, the 
gateway then communicates with the matrix home server uh, over the standard matrix client and server API. And after the data is on the matrix home server, it can be accessed, uh, for example, via different clients, so via desktop clients or via smartphone clients. And also these matrix home server data can be federated uh, via other matrix servers. And can, the data in the, in the rooms uh, can be used as you like. You can also deploy your own uh, application which uses uh, the client server API to access the data then. So the matrix protocol provides a lot of features and we didn't, uh, we are thinking that not all the features are interesting for IT use cases. Therefore, we selected a few features we thought will be relevant. And the first feature is uh, sending messages to a matrix room. Then it's also possible to receive the last message of a matrix room. Uh, so this is for the co for the co-matrix kinds. And it's also possible to register a new user at the uh, matrix home server. It's possible to join a matrix room after getting uh, invited to the room. And it's also possible to look in a user at a home server or lock, it, uh, lock him out. So some more details about our Comatrix gateway. Um, this is a co-op HTTP proxy, which we based on the Python co library called IO co uh, Thanks to Christian Amsis for that. Um, this, um, yeah, this gateway provides different co-op resources for the different features. So there is a co-op endpoint for registering a user and for example, for sending a message. And um, to be able to uh, yeah, uh, proxy this co-op request to a matrix home server, um, there needs to be the proxy URI option set in the co-op request, which contains the matrix home server URL uh, in either the, the full uh, client server API format or in a short format, um, which is specified in this matrix change request, uh, which is called a load bandwidth server API, and which we also implemented. So uh, on this slide, you can see the full uh, uh, URL for registering a user and the short URL format will be then just this slash for URL. Um, for um, the features which require authentication, we need to add a Synapse access token to the co-op request. And this is uh, put into a co-op option with the IT ID uh, 256. Um, and uh, the gateway then performs the HTTP request for a matrix home server and the res uh, responses uh, in JSON can be quite big. So we reduce these JSON responses to only necessary information for the IT devices and then send the uh, responses via code to them. Yeah, now I will talk about the core matrix client implementation, which we based on Riot OS. And we built, a, created an external Riot OS module and two example application. One is a chat client for testing and another one is a temperature sensor application where the setup you can see in the picture below. Uh, uh, our client module is based on uh, following de dependencies from the generic networking routing module for 802.15.4, uh, then the G Coop and Nano Coop libraries for Coop, and for Zebra we use the tiny Zebra package from Intel. Um, we use kconfig uh, for like the application specific uh, setups. There uh, can be defined like the IP for six address of the gateway. Here we lose, use a link local address. Um, then for the matrix synapse, um, we need to define the endpoint. Here we uh, use a uh, row. And uh, op optional, that can be defined the matrix room ID and the uh, synapse uh, access token. And Further, as already explained, Toby, there is uh, the possibility to enable the sh short proxy row and yeah, this switch is also. 
to set. Yeah, now we um, like to talk a little bit about our implementation experiences. Uh, if you're not used to coding for microcontrollers, anything can go wrong. Um, yeah, be aware of your buffer lengths and buffer overflows, uh, free allocated memory without dangling pointers, and take care of the number of threads you're calling. Anything can cause a kernel panic or a result in your system breaking down. Yeah, then we'd like to mention three problems we faced during the implementation. One was like overcoming the G-Core uh, packet size limitations. Uh, we had the problem that uh, in the beginning, the matrix synapse as access token had a length from more than 290 bytes, but the default G-Core packet PDU size was set to 128 bytes. We didn't know why. Then um, we figured out that we can like uh, increase that size, um, and we increased the PDU size to 500 bytes. Um, and fortunately, now uh, the code for the synapse changed, and now the um, tokens have the length of four bytes, which is more useful for IoT devices because of like the bandwidth limitations. Yes, another thing was like the lack of uh, randomness um on microcontrollers. It's uh, like um, for uh, sending a message to a room, a client uh, needs to create a unique message identifier and um yeah for this we thought to ask the gateway for a timestamp and then um to use the timestamp for the message identifier and um that worked out but uh also the uh co-op request needs a unique token if not the Gateway will send back the same timestamp because it's recognized as a duplicate packet. So there is this for this we didn't find any solution by now. Uh, our workaround now is to reset also the gateway. Yes, um, yeah, our <laughs> the limitations and the future work are we are still not able to talking secret. Uh, currently, uh, the implementations uh, only supports plain text communication. And uh, our future work will be to make this happen. Like, either we think about free options, either DTLS, like, uh, there we have the problem that uh, IO Co-op uh, doesn't support DTLS on the server side. Uh, or to use uh, OSCore, like, but there, in my opinion, it's a little bit a semantical problem because, like, uh, it's a play application layer encryption, and we break in the transport, like, uh, the encryption on the gateway, and then use uh, HTTPS again, uh, or uh, for encrypted network stack like open threads. Further, we still miss unit tests and uh, um, a callback handler, which uh, takes care also about the matrix errors. And um, we plan to reduce the bandwidth consumption by using SIBO integer keys as proposed by the matrix community. Here, um, Next slide, please. Yeah, here you can find our contact information and uh, documentation is available at uh, our website, comatrix.eu. Um, and our code is free, On you can find it on GitLab. And now I think, yeah, the project was funded by NetDate, and now I think we need to switch the screens because... 
um, we like to present also if there's time our should we start to question and answers or should we try to share our um, um, screen to present to the demo okay we'll try to share the screen again Sorry, I was muted. Sorry, I was apparently. muted. Um, um, there's one. Oh, I can hear myself yeah, maybe loudly. Um, there's one question. Um, if you're planning on submitting co-matrix for upstream inclusion to get it into right master. Yeah, we, we didn't do that until now because we thought it's not really useful for production use cases yet because the, uh, as we said, the uh, encryption part is missing uh, currently. So, and also and, I think it requires uh, unit tests and uh, the, these are also missing currently. Okay, so it's just small steps away, I guess. And the second question, um, can you give us an example of why IoT with matrix would be a good thing? Um, is this a replacement for MQTT or is this about humans interacting with devices? Yeah, if you, if you, can, you can also think of it as a replacement for MQTT. Um, I, I personally think it can be a cool uh, tool to um, start uh, home automation projects or yeah, so, so if you can use it at home with your on matrix home server and uh, but one of the the um, um, uh, the things why we presented this as these conferences that we think that there are uh, cool people out there and maybe they can use it for cool projects and uh, think of use cases we didn't even think about so um, but yeah you can use it to send uh, sensor data to a room uh, for example or you can also use it to uh, maybe um, um, try to interact with your microcontroller via this protocol. Right. And there's uh, one more question from Christian. Sorry, I overread it. Um, how large would matrix end-to-end -end encryption be? Yeah, we didn't uh, detailly look into that yet, um, but uh, I personally think it will be really hard to implement the matrix end-to-end -end encryption via the uh, OS. So I'm not sure if this is really possible. Uh, also, it will increase the overhead for the packets even further, so it may not be useful in a setting of a constrained network. All right, thanks. So, are you ready with the demo? Yeah, we can't you see your screen at the moment. Yeah. You, we will try it again. Sorry, it's connecting. Yeah, we still have some minutes, so it's fine. Maybe one, one question from my side while you're setting it up uh, very quickly. Have you ever considered to routing the riot shell through Matrix? No, we didn't try that yet, but okay. it sounds fun. Could be a fun thing to have the riot shell in a chat. Okay, I, I think we. Post entire screen. Sure. We are able to see our screen now. Yes, we are. Perfect. So um, here we like <laughs> to show you our setup. Uh, we have um, here uh, our Raspberry Pi 3B extended with the OpenLabs uh, 802.54 uh, module. And here we have uh, the SAM R21 Explain Pro uh, microcontrollers, one uh, where we flashed uh, the temperature. Um, application and in the other the chat application so and yeah um, further we have a 
laptop where we uh, deployed a matrix synapse uh, in a Docker container uh, backed up by a Postgres database. And um, here we connected to the Raspberry Pi uh, to run the gateway code, which is now when we um, start the temperature sensor, it should, yeah, it's sending, like this code just sends uh, temperature values every minute. So um, now we, um, connect to the chat client and reset um, and get like the timestamp from the gateway and ah I didn't show the last entity in uh, the element client um, the element client is also running on the laptop and uh, is um, in two rooms, one with the temperature sensor, which started to send like the temperature values now, and uh, the another room is like for um, the chat application. So, and now we log in. I took the same password. <laughs> like that's username and password, but now we got a co-op response code 204 that said it worked and we send a message. Yes, it worked also, and now we can also like send back. Uh, like hello Riot OS Summit. Now I send hello Toby, and uh, Toby gets back uh, the message with the co matrix commands um, receive message oh we didn't get bad request okay so in, in German it's called the forfeit effect yes uh, uh, I think we uh, know it all too well <laughs> We got back an encrypted message, says our gateway. <laughs> yeah, um, that was interesting. interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's sorry. I think we had the wrong room settings. No problem, I think. Yeah, so, but we know <laughs> how it should have looked like. Yeah, but you, you get the idea of what, what it works like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks for your advices uh, for the uh, randomness. We will try this out and also like for the uh, advice uh, using OSCOR. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, thank you very much for your demo. Awesome that it worked after all. Um, yeah, thanks to all the presenters again. And we will have now half an hour of coffee break and we will resume at 1 p.m. UTC. So see you around. <laughs>